Good afternoon to Dr. David Hardich, Dr. Craig Christina, President Burden, and all of you who are here this evening. I want to, first of all, thank you all for the invitation. Um, I want to thank VGCT for your support and membership and financially of the North American Baptist Fellowship. Some time ago, Dr. Christina called and invited me to, to be here today. And he said he had good news and bad news. The good news was that I would be invited to speak at the annual session. The bad news is that I would only have 20 minutes. I told him that's really bad news because from my tradition, 20 minutes is not even the introduction. <laughs> but also in, in our worship, in my tradition, the benediction is the shortest part of the worship experience. So I've decided to preach the benediction. <laughs> in Jude verses 24 and 25, it says, now unto him, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. For a few moments, I want to talk about the testimony of the benediction the testimony of the benediction. The book of Jude is much unlike the book of the Acts of the Apostles. For this book of Jude catalogs the Acts of the Apostates. In the book of Acts, we see a catalog of the Acts of the Apostles. And we come to this passage that I think is important uh, to hang around for the benediction. But we do know that in many of our Baptist circles, many of our people never hear the words of the benediction. Some don't hear it because they arrive at church after the devotion and right before the benediction, they excuse themselves. But we must understand that the church's strength must not totally be measured by what takes place between the devotion and the benediction. But the real strength of the church is what the church does between the benediction and the next devotion. And so as we look at this benediction that Jude writes, I see in this benediction a testimony. For he understands that there will be no testimony until there has been a test. And that while we are going through our tests, we need to be formulating our testimony. I had a member of our church ask me one time, Pastor, what am I going to do now that I'm going through all of this? It's going to be a long ordeal. I told that person, start writing your testimony. Because the God who you trusted before this challenge is still the same God. In the testimony of this benediction, Jude declares the ability of God. He uses a small uh, verb, a linking verb. He says to them in this present tense linking verb that God is able. In other words, declaring that God is not getting ready to become able, that God is not having some strategic plan to de be developed to get to the point where he will be able, but right now, God is able to handle any situation in our life. Uh, when we think about trying to get loans, you may go to the bank, and make application and the bank may turn you down 
but you do know that the bank is able to make the loan. Sometimes in our lives, we go to God in prayer, and I want you to know he may say no, but he's still able to say yes. And what is he able to do? As Jude talks in this testimony about the ability of God, he says that God is able to keep you from falling. And someone may say, well, I have fallen along the way. But God is able to keep you from falling. And if you fall, he is able to pick you up. And not only is he able to keep us from falling, but he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. He knows everything about us, but yet God takes us, presents us to himself as faultless because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so my brothers and sisters, in the testimony of the benediction, Jude talks about the ability of God and he slips into declaring some things about some of the attributes of God. We cannot really define God, but we can sometimes try to describe God and who he is and what power he has and what God can do. And so Jude says that God is the only wise God. He is a God that's in a class all by himself. He is a wise God, the God that saves souls. I remember one night being called to a home. A young man had been shot, and he had expired. And one of the other members came to that home, and he walked in the room, but he did not exercise wisdom because he began quoting Bible scriptures, and he said, He that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. I had just prayed and the family had calmed down. But when he said that, they got all upset over again. We must know how to be wise like God, to use the wisdom, wisdom, the proper use of knowledge. And so Jude, in the testimony of the benediction, he talks here about some of the attributes of God, that God is our savior, uh, that redemption is only available through the almighty God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so it is important for us as believers to learn uh, in our walk with God that God is able to redeem us because he is our Savior. Where well, Jude continues to talk about God in his testimony, he talks about God's glory, his magnificence, his beauty. He talks about his majesty, the greatness of God. He brags on his dominion, his control over the affairs in the world, his capacity to direct our lives and the affairs of this world. And so as he talks here about the testimony of the benediction, he declares the ability of God. He talks about the attributes of God, but I like the way he closes it. He talks about this alliance that has been formed in this benediction. God is constantly working in concert with his creation to establish and carry out his own will. A collaboration has been established in this benediction. It is announced in this benediction. It is a partnership that has been forged because Jude says both now and ever, present and future, time and eternity, both now and ever, God has glory, both now and ever, God has his majesty, his dominion and power. And it appears as Jude was going through this litany of things about the ability of God and the attributes of God and he kept going that he got overwhelmed and he closed out this benediction with that church word amen because he was thinking about both now and ever he is able to keep me from falling both now and ever he is able to present me faultless before the presence of his glory 
both now and ever. He is able to present me with exceeding joy. Both now and ever, he is the only wise God. Both now and ever, he is our Savior. Both now and ever, he has majesty, dominion, and power. And we ought to celebrate the testimony of the benediction that Jude lifts in this passage today. I stopped by to tell you this evening, I praise God for the testimony of Jude, but more than that, I praise God for my own testimony. Raised in a single parent home between two housing projects by a single mother and they said I'd get nowhere. But today I'm preaching to BGCT. God is able not only to keep us from falling, but God is able to lift us up and use us in his kingdom. I close by saying Somebody here today ought to ask the Lord to use you because he is a God that is in the blessing business. God, we come now to thank you for the testimony that's in this benediction. But help all of us to realize that as we live, we can formulate our own personal testimonies that are not written in the Bible, but they will be written on our hearts when we think about your goodness and how you have saved us how your son Jesus has died and been resurrected and is coming back again we can give that testimony to our family members to our neighbors and our friends and we too can celebrate the testimony of Jude's benediction in Jesus name I pray Amen.